Gabby. How are you? I'm good. I'm getting this like little angle. I feel like oh, I look naked with this shirt. <laughs> you look like you're not, you're not wearing a top, so it's like one of those. I know. I was like, let me up. angle. I'm like, let me angle this a little bit better. Hi. Great. I love it. Hi. It's so good to see you. It's been a while. Good to see you too. I know. How are you doing in New York? Um, pretty good. New York um, is New York. Um, <laughs> Staying indoors, staying safe, uh, doing doing my part. Um, how are you? Good in California, staying indoors. Yeah, um, yeah. And you get some sun too. at least, so that's great. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. So everyone, welcome to Artists on Go. I'm Tina. I'm in conversation with our artist um, Gabby. She is an Emmy Award winning makeup artist from Los Angeles. Um, but Gabby, I'm gonna kind of let you introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, um, my name is Gabby. I am a makeup artist. Um, I was living in LA, then I moved to New York, and then I came back to LA for a job, and now I'm stuck here for quarantine. Um, but I'm really excited to be a part of this artist series that you guys have started during this quarantine. So yeah, I'm here for it. And hopefully yeah, awesome. I'm so very excited to have you. You have such um, an interesting story. I kind of want to know about um, your Emmy Award winning um, time. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, I it was something that was never a goal of mine, like getting awarded to, or being recognized as a makeup artist with like an actual like I don't know just like an award like that was never a goal of mine so when that happened I honestly didn't know how to take it I was very humbled by it um but and it's a, it's a great it's an amazing accomplishment and I'm so honored to be a part of um, that echelon of artists um, in the industry, but it's something that really humbled me because I was like, I feel like I still have so much to learn and so much more to go with my career. Um, I started in 2010, so 10 years ago in LA, and my goal then was just to be a professional makeup artist like I just wanted to be a makeup artist and build a life doing something that I love and I didn't need to be recognized um in any way like I social yeah. media was was like a breaking when I had started like I remember when I downloaded Instagram for the first time and I took a picture of soup like I didn't know what to do you know yeah. um and I was like what is this app and <laughs> You know, I, so I started my career with, um, at the break of social media and, but my goal was never to be, um, an artist, like in the digital space. I just really wanted to get paid for doing makeup every day mm -hmm. and then do all the things that I love. So all to say the, the, the journey to get to that accolade was not something intentional. <laughs> It was right, really, but I mean, like, it, was it must have been such an amazing feeling, though. Yeah, it was. It was. It was one of those things where um, when it happened, I didn't know how to even really share about it, and mm -hmm. I didn't really know how to digest it. So it's it was it was a, it was surreal. Like I still, it's still surreal to me. Yeah. Um, so just because I feel like there's always so much more um to learn and to do in this field so yeah. absolutely I mean I I think that's uh kind of true in every field you go into so I I totally get you um <laughs> uh I just want to um talk about how we kind of found each other how did you find the artist and go um through a hairstylist Ricardo Rojas love him oh we love Ricardo yeah at Hair by Ricardo Rojas and Ricardo Rojas Hair Care. Um, I met him in Cannes, actually, um, working. Oh. Yeah, for last year at the Cannes Film Festival. And um, we just 
kind of clicked. And then when I moved to New York, he just invited me on to different projects and I was helping with um, his hairline. And, um, and then I got to meet the team at Artists on Go and I got to hear about what was happening and what you guys are building out. And I really, really um, loved it. It's an amazing platform for um, freelancers um, to utilize as they are, you know, just kind of navigating what it means to be a solo entrepreneur, because that's really what you are when you're a freelancer, like, Mm -hmm. like it or not, like you want to be a creative, but like, sorry, like business is built into it. And Artists on Go is a great platform and tool to help with the, um, I guess the entrepreneurial process as you're like really trying to navigate um, a city or like building your own clientele um, and managing your like overhead at the same time and location. There's so many things to it. (laughs) And when you moved to New York, you were kind of, you were a hundred percent freelancer, right? Yeah. And I still am a hundred percent freelance. Yeah. Are you doing any, um, are you uh, working on any clients in LA? I'm not sure how it is up there right now. Um, no, I've been only working in like production, like in TV here. Um, okay. I came out here for a contract, but nope, everything is shut down. <laughs> I'm like, okay. everything is shut down here. <laughs> when are you coming back to New York? Um, as soon as this quarantine lifts and we figure out what's going on with the existing contract and once I mm. figure out everything, yeah, I think right now everything is just kind of at a standstill. I'm sure yeah. for a lot of people, even for a lot of artists, probably um, chiming in or tapping in and hi. <laughs> Somebody said hi, ladies. I'm like, hey, hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, obviously, if anyone have any questions for uh, Gabby, makeup or just... Uh, business freelance sense, uh, feel free to ask. If anyone have any questions about Artists on Go, feel free to ask me. Um, DM us as well. Um, but yeah, just it's so interesting with um, what's happening now and you being in LA um, and your contract, um, do you plan, is that contract gonna start, start um, once this quarantine is over or was that contract done? I hope so. I mean, at this point, like nobody really knows what's going on. So I can't really I would I would hope that it is. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, you always have to be a little bit ready for the unknown and the unexpected. Yeah. Um, And how are we planning? No, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I guess I was just thinking like, you know, we've been having um, artists on go. We've been having these conversations with um, artists who use us. Um, mm-hmm. and how how we're planning for the future when the salons reopen um, and when business goes back to usual. Um, how are you planning that into um, your, I guess, your plans? I guess for me, it's one of those things where since we don't really know when this is going to be lifted and as beauty professionals, like our careers are based on like, service right with like Mm -hmm. another human so it's really interesting trying to pivot and trying to plan ahead especially when we don't know I think artists on go as a platform is a great way to kind of plan ahead um for you know artists or hairstylists in New York City that might want to feel a little bit more secure with their books you know I would Mm -hmm. suggest booking ahead like book if you're gonna if you want to try to book in june and you want to follow up with some clients and just say that hey like i want to open my books up you know in june just like give everybody ample time like if you want to go ahead and like hold a slot for now um and then if we could push you up earlier we can and being able to do that and to book freely and to move around your schedule with artists on go i think that you guys have a great thing going yeah and Mm -hmm. i think that's kind of our mission really especially in this time where yes salons are closed but let's plan for when salons reopen um we 
you know, we have that option to offer stylists, makeup artists, and people in the beauty industry a space to work from. Um, and just how are you, um, how are you handling like this quarantine time? Are you taking care of yourself? Or are you, I don't know, any type of indulgences that you want to share with us? Um, I'm, I'm taking my, I'm taking care of myself by, um, really trying to stick to a schedule. Um, so I schedule virtual workouts and I'm part of virtual like groups that I love will, that. Like, yeah, that'll do like workouts or wellness, um, like wellness sessions. Let, let it be just like, you know, a group of women that are coming together to talk about wellness and what we're struggling with mm -hmm. in terms of career. I have co-working um, buddies that I virtually co-work with. Like we'll do Zoom sessions and Google Hangouts and brainstorm how we can all pivot and be innovative mm -hmm. with um, the time that we're given. Um, so that's how I'm kind of taking care of myself on a personal level and on a business level is just surrounding myself with people who are trying to find solutions and make the most of this time and to step in into the things in business and in health that like we don't really make the time for when we have a lot of things on our plate externally and so that's a big one and any indulgences oh man I think I like freaking emote like I like emotionally ate the first like week and a half to two weeks of this quarantine in LA yes. like as soon as like production is shut down and like Hollywood closed pretty much I like bunkered down for like a week and indulged in nothingness like I legit like <laughs> that is I an would... indulgence right when it's yeah. nothingness it's just uh taking care of yourself giving yourself that time yeah and it was funny because one of my roommates in LA she was like getting everything done in the house like she was like filling her time with like busy work and I was like I'm not doing shit sorry I was like I'm not doing anything you know yeah. like I'm just gonna like make vegan nachos and eat chocolate and sit on the couch and I love that and like, <laughs> you know that's all I did so that was my big indulgence and now I'm like back to work and really trying to keep myself surrounded with a virtual community that allows me to think outside the box and to keep moving forward. That's awesome. I love that because I think this is kind of the time where we are starting to figure out how how to break the mold that we're so used to. And even even when you're talking about like um, indulging and doing nothing, that's just not something we're used to. Being from like LA or like New York City, yeah. so like New York hustle, we're constantly busy. So. I think it's trying, like for me, um, during this time, still working, how to stay busy, but also having that extra time to be okay, to be relaxed and yeah, you know, not I running around the city yeah. or running around. Um, so yeah. I, I, I love what you just said right there. Cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I personally, I think that like, I started having to shift my perspective of like, okay, this is a forced vacation. So when you're on vacation, you literally, for me at least, I get into this mindset of really enjoying the present and enjoying the little things and enjoying the meals with my friends or family who I'm traveling with or going outside and like taking walks and connecting with people. And yeah. so I kind of take those elements because I think that for me, I don't know if this is anybody else, but for me, once I get into that more relaxed state, my mind starts to kind of like unload. And then all of a sudden that brain fog of panic and worry and fear and all of that, like started to really subside. And granted, it took me like a couple weeks to get here. Like it took me yeah. the first week of not doing anything. And then the second week of kind of still trying to cope through like, adjusting into what am I what am I actually doing with yeah. my career and my life like having a complete existential crisis and recognizing like we're all in this together and so yeah. going into like the third week of this I'm finally like all right pick yourself up you can enjoy the sun 
enjoy the time, stay productive when you want to be productive and just have a focus. And so, cool. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we definitely have our different stages of this. And like, <laughs> this is, um, this is kind of the point where a lot of people are starting to plan for the future and plan and pivot. I think I love that word. And that's like, um, one of our other artists, Jason uses it like that's kind of his guide. Um, but how do we pivot, right? Um, and I think like, especially in a time like now, um, in the beauty industry um, and the service industry in general, it, it is really hard to hit. So how do the people who are in this, in this industry um, pivot and, you know, kind of come out in the end where they don't feel so lost? I think it's about getting creative. We are an industry of creatives. Yeah. So how beautiful is it that we already are able to think outside the box and mm -hmm. create what it is that we want. I think it's really important to get with that though, comes like this fine line of us being so emotional and very, um, very attuned to feelings. And mm -hmm. we have like a lot of empathy. So I'm sure that there's a lot of us out there. I definitely felt it like where, like you turn on the news and you would just want to cry. Like you would hear about like the way that other people are suffering. You'd hear about the way, um, how loved ones are being lost um, in this and how people are being separated. You can't see them like uh, just really horrible things. And I think my biggest piece of advice that I would want somebody to like walk away with, I think is tapping into the creative space to help, um, to help heal like yeah. your own personal emotions. So it's like step into whatever creativity it is that you like, whether it's like painting or cooking or mm -hmm. baking or sculpting. I have friends who like Amazon clay and like I Amazoned a watercolor set, yeah, you know, yeah, like I'm trying to like tap into all these creative things, maybe read a book, like, you know, write a book, like write, you know, listen, play music, like pick up that, guitar or ukulele or that drum set that's in the yeah. corner or that keyboard that's like been collecting dust like with a sheet over it you You're know like, like hitting so many of like the stuff that I need to start doing as well yeah. and it's like the like, watercolor book that I've like had it mm -hmm. like you know by my bedside forever I have like five books that I've started so you know like yes we but, all uh, have this time and I think it's one of those things where once that creativity is like, once you start tapping into that, for me, at least, the last couple of weeks, I'm really trying to, like, explore what can, like, help my mind unload all of the negativity. And once that cleared, I think planning for the future gets clearer for each individual. And so that was, like, a long-winded thing of I would encourage the creativity and think outside the box, um, yes. you know, virtual guided bang cutting sessions, virtual facial sessions. Um, you know, suggesting which box dye if a client really mm -hmm. cannot wait to get into the chair and they need so a quick So do fix. you, do you think it's okay to box dye? This is I mean, at the end of the day, like, I, people, it's, one thing or another, it's going to be, at this point, it's, but I can't even speak, it's either comfort for yourself during an uncomfortable time and dealing with it later or sitting in the discomfort and sucking it up and being okay, like not being comfortable with like your root showing. Mm -hmm. It really, it's whatever is going to make you feel the most confident and comfortable in such an uncertain and uncomfortable time. And so I think that when we're all looking for some type of note of comfort or um, like self care, if it's going to even be like, cathartic for somebody to get a box eye and just brush through their hair and like maybe somebody hasn't brushed their hair in a couple weeks because they don't want to see the roots because they don't want to see mm -hmm. their hair color and or they've been wearing a hat or there's like you know whatever's going to promote the best sense of self-care I'm for like yeah. and you know what at the end of the day like th that gives them more reason to get into your chair and then you're going to have to fix it and you know what you as a professional you should be able to fix it and forgive it because I'm sure you've played with box dyes multiple times in your like early career and stages. So right. yeah, it is what it is. 
Can I ask you what is the one drastic thing that you've done while you're you've been in quarantine? Drastic? <laughs> You know, people are cutting their own bangs and people are cutting each other's hair. So okay, so this that's is like drastic this... for some people. And, okay, you know, so I drastic... used to cut my own bangs. So No, 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 I get it. Drastic for me is I took my gels off and I did my own pedicure, which I hate doing nails. Like, even when mm. I was in beauty school, like, I, like, like, I wanted to cheat my way through, like, the nail portion. I'm right. just, like, not... Yeah, I just, it's not my thing. And so I actually, like, spent an afternoon, like, dipping and, like, buffing and dipping and buffing and cutting and buffing and breaking and then, like, and then painting and then retouching. Like, it was, like, a whole thing for me, but I actually did my nails. Oh, cool. So and took the gels off. Are they healthy now? Are you taking that time to take care of your fingernails? Yeah, I actually don't mind it. I was like, oh, I've yeah. never... Like, in the last five years, I don't think I've seen my toes and my hands bare at the same time. Oh, wow. Time. Yeah. That's, yeah. Pretty, that's pretty drastic. <laughs> yeah. So, I, like... We just get so like, used to... It's kind of, like, the same as, like, you know, never seeing your natural color, never seeing your natural fingernails or natural nails. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is the time where, like, going natural is is okay. Yeah, um, I've actually put a lot more makeup on. Like, I'm, like, it's the one thing that has, like, made me more productive. Like, the first day I did it was on Monday. And I put a face on, and I brushed my hair. And I legit cleaned my entire, like, the, my parents' house. Like, I clean. I was, like, on the floor, like, like going into tiles, like getting the nitty gritty. With a full like, face of makeup. With a full face I love it. It made me so productive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes like putting on makeup, um, I, I do it when we do these lives. <laughs> Um, but I still do it like um, just even to go out and get milk and stuff and it, it just kind of it's how we make ourselves feel right and it's mm -hmm. like I don't even care I'm, I, I'm not seeing anyone but I just you, I just feel better about it myself like and it's not just makeup it's just how um, how um, I think yeah, I, I, like, lost my word for that, but I just think, like, makeup complements us as opposed to hide, hide our, our beauty, so I think that's what I'm trying to get at, like, oh, I just, yeah. you know, right, and you're a makeup artist. It accentuates artist. you, mm -hmm. it accentuates you, and it just, like, helps, so, yeah, whatever is good. Cool, you know, and also, helps. I know I've been, um, watching you on, um, I don't, I don't have TikTok yet, but I know you are um, a TikTok star. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but everyone, you, everyone should uh, check out Gabby on her TikTok or her Instagram. I love it. It's really fun. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! I was like, I am that auntie on TikTok. Like, I literally feel like that. Like on here, I'm like, what? Am I actually doing? It took me hours. That was also what I was doing, like the first two weeks of yeah, this quarantine. Like learning like, how okay. to use TikTok. <laughs> yeah, because that was the biggest thing for me. Everyone was like, "Why don't you try TikTok?" And I'm like, "Because it takes it's too complicated. It's too time consuming." Yeah. And then I finally was like, "Oh, I have time to figure this out." Right, right, right. And I love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, same with me. I'm like, do I really need another social media? But the content on TikTok is amazing. So I, so I think I do. <laughs> you do. It's so fun. So That's fun. awesome. So we're coming to the end of this conversation, but um, let's just kind of, I, I do want to kind of finish it up with um, um, how are your books um, right now? Do you have any clients booked for, we kind of talked about maybe pre-booking or something. Do you have any clients booked for um, you know, June, maybe. I don't right now. I don't because I also, for me, to be completely transparent, like I don't know what city I'm going to be in. June. Yeah. Like it could be LA, it could be New York. It really depends on what is the result of right. this quarantine and how it's going to affect the beauty industry and also the like TV and motion picture yeah. industry as well. Um, but with all that being said, for New Yorkers, with the ability to book 
and pre-book with artists on go I highly recommend like if I was solely focusing on just building clientele and um also just retaining the client base that I built in New York I 100% would get on artists on go and pre-book for June just have placeholders so that you have your time slots you have your um you know your routine clients that just like come to you religiously at least they have they have the security blanket knowing mm -hmm. that like they have an appointment like heck if I could do that with my facial spa that I go to um like I want to book so badly a facial like I've been wanting a facial for the last like oh my god months. tell me about and then this it. happens and I am just like I need a facial I need everything I am actually dying to get a massage a facial um, I'll probably like wait for the hair cut a little longer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I, like, DM'd the hair spouse that I go to out here in LA, and I was just like, as soon as this is over, like, mm -hmm. I am coming to see you. So, yeah. by all means, I'm sure there's hundreds and thousands of people who probably feel the same way. So, New York, please, you know, be proactive in your career and your bookings and just pick a day in the future and just be like, I'm going back to work on this day and this is how I'm going to start scheduling out my clients and do that. And Artists on Go is the perfect platform to do that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thanks so for this welcome. conversation. Um, any last bits you want to you wanna say? No, I hope everybody is staying home and staying as active as they can. And whenever they feel sad, I hope you either pick up the phone or pick up a good book or something funny to watch. Yeah. Uh, because this will all be sooner or be done sooner than later so yeah what is yeah. the one show that you recommend give me that i'm watching Shit's creek right now oh, i okay. love Shit's creek and then because it's funny and so good and if somebody wants more of like a drama i really like succession in the winter so okay. if you got hbo go shout out to succession i love that series it's okay, shocking. that's awesome. I haven't watched like, either of those, so I will put that on my list. Um, but thank you. And then for me, Tiger King, everyone. <laughs> Tiger King? Yeah. Hey, girl. Awesome. You want to be socially relevant? You have to watch Tiger King right now. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. I'll awesome. I'll thank try. you, Gabby. It was You're so welcome. good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. We'll chat soon. Bye. Bye.